This next section is not um, the enumerated powers or the expressed powers. These are the implied powers. All right. So it's a little bit different. Okay. When I began the last video, I asked you to think about rules that are actually in the handbook. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a different situation. I want you to imagine you're going to go to Enterprise or Cheap Joe and you're going to talk to an eighth grader that's planning to come to Hampert High School next year. And you want to let them know all the unwritten rules, right? Like the rules of the road kind of a thing. In other words, what's something you want to not do so that you can be successful and also not annoying. But it isn't actually in the handbook, right? So it's not like, oh, read the handbook. You'll be fine. No, no, no. This isn't in the handbook. These are things I'm telling you if you want to be successful. And I'm telling you, I've done, I've asked students these questions before. And you probably are already having a million thoughts about what to say to this person, right? You might talk to them about, hey, you know what? Probably have a good relationship with your teacher, right? Because if you come in as a jerk the first day, probably not going to go well. Other things I've heard, hallway etiquette is pretty much by far the most important thing. Don't walk down the middle of the hallway. Don't hold hands with people walking down the hallway. Don't have your Chromebook open and be working on something actively or especially playing a game, right? It's one thing if you're saving something on Canvas, but like playing a game on your, no, no. Don't listen to music on a loudspeaker in the hallway, right? Don't get in the way and bump past people or stop. These are all things that you know. And these are things you watch freshmen do every year. And it is super, super annoying, right? So clean up the hallway behavior and you'd actually be a pretty successful freshman. Watch romance. Do you need to be having PDAs in the hallway, hugging your significant other right before class and telling them how much you love them? Don't do any of that, right? Don't do any of that if you want to be successful at Hanford High School. There's a funny story right outside my door. I always stand and greet everybody as they come in. There used to be a couple just that stand right next to me. And they basically would be making out every day. It was disgusting, right? And it just got awkward for me. And it got awkward for Mr. Suggs. And so we started singing love songs to them. Cupid, hold back you. And they'd go away and they looked at us like, what are you doing? And we said, what are you doing? Do you want to be successful at this school? Let go. Save it for later. Number three, parking. Once you learn to drive, park in a spot that makes sense. Uh, be consistent. Don't take other people's parking spots, especially in the spring when it gets very full. So parking is usually a big thing. And then finally, bathrooms. This has been a disaster this year. We got people riding on stalls. We have people basically taking off dispensers. We've had people doing illegal activity in the bathroom. Be a citizen of the school and clean up your behavior in the bathroom. These are all unwritten rules. The bathroom may be a little bit more of a written rule because it's destroying property. But still, if you could just walk down a hallway save romance for later when you actually start parking um, and have a car be uh, you know observant about that and don't fool around in the bathroom so you have to lock them all the time we'd have a pretty good year right these are all unwritten rules this is exactly how you need to be thinking about article one section eight of the constitution you read article eight yet or section eight yesterday article one but at the very bottom there's a clause called the necessary and proper clause Basically, Congress, in addition to all the powers we listed, has the ability to do anything necessary and proper to carry out these powers. You might be thinking, well, what does that mean, necessary and proper? Exactly. It's pretty vague. And the reason it's vague is because it can be interpreted to mean many different things. So this is known as the elastic clause, elastic like you wear on your, around your waist, right? It can stretch. It stretches the powers of Congress to fit the situation. And it gives Congress a lot of power beyond what the, what the Constitution just says. Right? These are implied powers. And I do like to think about the unwritten rules of Hanford High School because it's not written down that Congress can do these things. Kind of like the things you might be thinking about how to make a freshman successful aren't written down, but they're still important. So yesterday I had you fill out a chart with all the um, expressed powers, the actual things written in the Constitution. Today uh, you're looking at a chart and I actually want you copying this information down into your notes right below that. So these are examples of the implied powers. But I couldn't have you search for the implied powers because it's not going to be listed, right? So when it comes to money and commerce, the federal government can do a lot of things. Congress, right? Well, it doesn't say that they can establish a minimum wage. And it doesn't say that they can prohibit discrimination in public places. But in reality, they can. Because it's implied that in order to regulate commerce, regulate the way money is spent by the executive branch, you can make it to where, hey, you know what? If you're going to build a new building that we're giving you money for, you can't discriminate against people based on a disability, right? Or, hey, if we are setting national wage standards across 50 states so that we have some semblance of fairness, 
um, we get to be the power that does that because we're the ones that actually coin the money, right? When it comes to social services, you once again have examples of what they can do. Does it say that they can uh, collect and deliver mail? No, but it does say they can establish post offices. So it's implied that if you can establish a post office that you can deliver the mail or you can regulate that. It's also, they set the laws for immigration. Well, guess what? They can regulate that and they can limit it or make it bigger however they want. It doesn't say they can, but if you have the power to determine who becomes a citizen and how that process goes, then you have the power to regulate it going forward. And then finally, when it comes to the military, um, they have the power to regulate or to, to basically fund the Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Guess what? Those branches didn't exist in 1790. But it stands to reason if you can support the Army and the Navy, then you can do the other branches as well. And that also includes the ability to draft Americans into military service. If you have the ability to raise an army, you have the ability to call on Americans to serve in that army. These are all examples of implied powers that Congress uses a lot or has in the, in the history of Congress has used a lot, even though they're not written down. So once again, the unwritten rules, the things that expand their power, these are a few examples I'd like all these added to your notes.